freedom 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 over fame freedom freedom over f- cycle stays the same welcome first of all welcome this is unsolicited perspectives and i am your host bruce anthony thank you for listening and watching wherever you get your podcast and video podcast subscribe share like comment and rate us you can find us on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch at unsolicited underscore perspectives. You can find us on Twitter and TikTok at unsolicited underscore P-E-R. Watch us live now. Watch us live every Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Twitch and YouTube. Our audience, our audience continues to grow with each and every episode, and I humbly thank you. On today's episode, is the Sibling Happy Hour. I'm here with my sis, Jay Andrea. We're going to be dilly daddling a little bit. Then we're going to be talking about Arkansas getting away with uh, African-Americans AP courses. And then we're going to be talking about the Mike Orr situation. But first things first. Hey there, podcast listeners. It's Bruce Anthony here. And welcome to another episode of Unsolicited Perspectives. Today, I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind lately, the importance of staying hydrated and taking care of ourselves. Whether it's prioritizing our health and wellness or gearing up for festival seasons or just gearing up for whatever season or time of year, there's one brand that's been my go-to for all things hydration, Liquid IV. Speaking of health and wellness, let's dive into how Liquid IV can fuel your well-being. Imagine starting your day off right, feeling refreshed and energized. Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier is the missing piece in your daily routine. With just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. It's perfect for those early mornings, pre-workout boosts, moments when you're just feeling run down, or even after a late night or long flights. I absolutely love how convenient Liquid IV is. The packaging makes it easy to bring with me wherever I go. And let me tell you, it's become vital daily part of my routine. The flavors, <laughs> let me tell you something, they're incredible. From refreshing sea berry and strawberry lemonade to classics like lemon lime and watermelon, there's a flavor for every preference. It's like a burst of hydration with a hint of deliciousness. Picture this. One stick of liquid IV mixed in 16 ounces of water, hydrating you two times faster and more efficient than water alone. And with 12 mouth water and flavors, you'll never get bored with your hydration routine. Plus, liquid IV is packed with five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and of course, vitamin C. It's also made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. This is hydration at its finest, but it doesn't stop there. Liquid IV believes that access to clean and abundant water is the foundation of a healthier world. That's why they partner with leading organizations finding innovative solutions to help communities protect both their water and their futures. It's incredible to know that Liquid IV has already donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. They truly walk the talk. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code unsolicited at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code unsolicited at liquidiv.com. Remember folks, taking care of ourselves should always be a priority. So why wait? Head over to liquidiv.com, pick your favorite flavors and experience hydration like never before. Stay refreshed, stay hydrated, and keep rocking those unsolicited perspectives. What up, sis? What up, brother? I ain't doing nothing but chilling. This is going to be a little different because I changed the camera. So I'm I'm looking down instead of up. I don't know how that's going to be when we look in the video. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Somebody just had a birthday. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. It was literally yesterday. It was literally um, yesterday. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank I didn't, you. I didn't get a chance to talk to you. I texted you in the morning and I called you at night when I was done with work and you was just like, I ain't going to call you back. Uh, So I knew I was going to talk to you right now. <laughs> so I figured, <laughs> I figured it'd be okay. You know, I, I had an edible and... Mm. Uh, 
and I watched some cartoons and I, I ordered a giant pretzel. Where'd you get the pretzel from? It was just like an appetizer at some local restaurant. I just okay. I just put pretzel into Uber Eats and it gave me a list of restaurants that had pretzels. And it was a giant Bavarian pretzel and it took me two days to eat. I finished <laughs> later today. I finished it today. <laughs> you you and our brother love those damn Bavarian pretzels. They're delicious. And I, at some reason, I just said, yeah, I got to have a pretzel. <laughs> oh, hey, and look. so I spent my birthday the way I wanted and it was great. Well, that would make sense because you had a birthday party yes. on Saturday. This yes. Was a, I, I'm not trying to make it about me, but this is also another time where I tried to, to FaceTime you so I could at least partake in, in the party and, and you didn't answer your yeah, phone Yeah, that was another situation where I wasn't sober. So I <laughs> don't, you know, I apologize. Uh, you don't need to apologize. <laughs> it's, it's your birthday. You celebrate your birthday the best way that you can. That's the yeah. most important thing. It yeah. is your birthday. I, I don't remember much from the party, which means I guess I had a good time. What so, did, did everybody have a good time? Did you? I assume. You, I assume. I don't know. Nobody, <laughs> nobody called me to cuss me out the next day. So I assume it was fine. Well, how was the food? Because I know that was the thing that you was most excited about. Delicious. Delicious. Like our, our cousin's girlfriend cooked everything and she came over earlier that day and made a bunch of food. I mean, we had chicken, jerk pork, salmon, mac and cheese. Like she hooked it up and I was like, thank you so much. I definitely wouldn't have been able to pull that off without her. So oh, shout dope. out to her. Well, I'm glad that you enjoyed your birthday, your last birthday before 40. Yeah, no. Listen, so I went to the doctor. Yeah. For I had just my annual physical. I went on my birthday because I'm like, I took the day off work. I might as well go. <laughs> I might okay. as well go to the doctor. You know. All right. All right. She started. Listen, I just turned 39 today, ma'am. Like, <laughs> and she started listing all the old people tests that I have coming up. She's like, you know, mammograms at 40 colonoscopies at 45 and i'm like what are we doing here i just turned 39 today i was born today 39 years ago can you relax you don't Actually, have to you were born yesterday 40 years ago no that's not how age works no that's not how and we count no but it's so, actually been 40 years no it's you're been starting 39 your 40... this is the start of my 40th year no, 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 no. I mean, it's this a start, is the start of your... Yes, this is the start of my 40th year. When you get to one, you have I lived, have lived for, for one year. Yes. yes. So when I get to 39, I've lived for 39 years. Some of that math ain't mathing right. It is mathing. You're trying to count zero. Don't count zero. It's zero to one. Then you turn one because you have just completed one year of life. So by the time I turn 39, <laughs> I've completed 39 years of life. So Okay. So you've yes. started, you've already started your 40th year in life. Yes, That's what I meant is, to say. This, this is my 40th year. year. Yes. Like I say, it's my last year of 30s because it's the last year that I will have a three in front of my age. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's actually you're actually starting my 40th, your 40th year. year. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. That's what I meant to say. Yes. That's what I meant to say. You all yeah. And she, at, listen, apparently, medically, <laughs> because she started listing all this stuff. And I'm like, hey, listen, we don't need to do this yet. Now, now I'm going to be thinking about this for an entire year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about this yet. But I mean. This is they, where we are. This is where we are. It's, it is what it is. So It is what it is. But you enjoyed call, your birthday. I did. You feel good. All the decorations are still up. I have not cleaned up my place yet. Yeah, you don't have to. I, you know, there's balloons everywhere. It's you fine. should have another get together, and it should be a cleanup get together. It's, you know what? And here's why I love my friends. Everybody cleaned up when they left. Like they oh. got all the dishes, wiped down the counters, put everything in the fridge. Oh, like, you got some good friends. Yeah, my friends, because I was in no position to do any of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I wasn't, I wasn't in a frame of mind to do any of it. So they, they took the trash out, everything. Oh wow! Yeah, so my friends. All you are gotta amazing. do is take down the balloons. Yeah, it's literally just the decorations up. 
Okay. What? Well, so my bestie sent me uh, a money tree plant, mm -hmm. and then balloons attached to it, and I had those balloons up for for a good three weeks. Yeah, because it's yeah. it's hard. You know, it's hard. It's a bunch. It's like a bunch of balloons, and then I got balloons as as a gift. So I'm well, like, well, I don't want to just pop them. You know, it's gonna get to a point where you're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Yeah. But at they're gonna this be floating point. Around. At this point, the streamers, everything is it's all still up. I have taken nothing down. I said I was gonna take it down on my birthday, but it looks like it looks like my birthday is gonna last a <laughs> couple more days at least. So Hey, it's your, well, that's normally how you celebrate it anyway. Yeah. You normally take the whole month and celebrate it. No, I usually don't celebrate my birthday at all. You do it your own little way. Yeah, in my in my yeah. way of like, yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> but but way. i bet you don't regret having that party now do you no it was fun yeah. i was glad to have everybody yeah i mean even though i thought about canceling it every day yeah that's what happens with us <laughs> for some strange reason we're yeah. adverse to 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 uh celebrating ourselves for some strange reason i don't know why yeah. that is i don't know I, I but i really truly hate it um People think I'm joking. I'm not joking. I truly, mm -hmm. I truly hate it. And it's all three of us. <laughs> yeah. It's all three of us. Just none of us, celebrate. none and of us not, are good with our birthdays. And it's not like our parents didn't celebrate our birthdays when we were younger. It's not like they was like, here, here's your gift, a whooping. <laughs> it wasn't like, <laughs> right. it wasn't, you know, we always had a gift, you know. Uh, whatever. I don't know why that is. I'm sure there's um, some. There's some therapy. Some childhood trauma. Yeah, there's some therapy that could that could pull that out. Probably. What you want to talk about today since we on the diddly daddling? In? So I discovered a new sport and I sent you <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You just discovered this has been a I thing just, for a little while. I the, I just discovered it today. Slap fighting. Yeah. Absolutely not. No. Yeah. It looks, first of all, hilarious but also terrifying yeah the people out there really like see slap fighting is a little different than like boxing or mixed martial arts because in boxing and mixed martial arts you can defend yourself yes this slap fighting you got to take the slap head yes. on and just roll with it flinching is like it's against the rules so you can't i can't even flinch a little bit who said that punta why you flinch Oh, that was uh, my man Peoples from that Shaft movie with Samuel L. Jackson. Oh. People Hernandez. One of Peoples the greatest, Hernandez, yes. One of the greatest characters in cinema history is Peoples Hernandez. I I would have to disagree with you on that. I mean, You got to go back and watch it. No, I mean, shout out to Jeffrey Wright. He's an amazing actor. Oh, absolutely amazing. Um, I've pretty much loved everything I've ever seen him in. So... Yeah, from that standpoint, he did a great job as Peoples Hernandez, but I don't know that cinema history, that feels like a lot. I'm going to go back and rewatch it. Uh, but so slap boxing. Yes. What a nightmare. And so also, I I'm saying it's not just men, women slap, women slap box. And there's, it's just the wind up mm -hmm. that you get like, you get like three little wind ups and then you can slap. And they be bringing that hand real far back. And this is a open hand slap in the face. Yeah, people get knocked out from that. And it will, it, like, knocking people out their boots. Like, I am watching <laughs> videos of this, and people are just, like, dazed. Yeah. And it feels like we've just made getting a concussion a sport. It's it's one of the there's no art form to it. Or maybe there no. is. Maybe there is. I don't know. I I'm not taking no voluntary hits though. No. Not voluntary. No. Now, if it's combat, okay. But this ain't combat. This no. is who could take the most pain. I'll go you one better. It's not better. It's just whatever. <laughs> um they have booty slapping league too. I found that on TikTok. That's please explain. It's because I exactly, feel it's exactly what I said. I feel it was. like it is what is what you're saying. It is. Yep, it's exactly what I'm saying. It is. It's it's the same thing as the face slap. It's just on your booty. Are people bending over? Mm -hmm. Yep. And allowing the asses to be slapped. Yes, ma'am. And to see who 
who gives up first because you're not knocking nobody out with an ass slap. <laughs> asses be red, though. Asses be red. Are they bare asses? Uh, it's, okay, so I have to put this out there. It's women. So uh-huh. they're wearing thongs. So okay. it's bare ass, yeah. but not booty, but naked. But yes. Are but women slapping other women? Yes, yes, yes. It's not. I, okay. I haven't seen no men slapping women. Okay. It's, it's women slapping women. That wouldn't really be fair because they got to go back and forth. But in equality, in this world of equality, you know, hey. Right. You know? I mean, I I might take a boot to somebody ass like that. <laughs> Out of con- what's happening? What's happening in the world today? People are just bored. Yeah, I guess so. And and, and the people are bored, and people are taking the extreme further and further and further. Yeah, you know that's they're that's going just... into submersibles. They're going to outer space. Yeah, they're people slapping just... the hell out of each other. Yeah, that's all it is. For some asinine reason, fame. Yeah, that's all it is. Is fame. Everybody want to be an influencer or mm. be TikTok famous. I, I, I'm on TikTok now, and I'm like, all it's everybody that's on there, yeah. And it's everybody trying to be TikTok famous. I'm mm-hmm. like, sir, you are 60 years old. Why are you DJing and playing it over to TikTok? Are you trying to get famous? Yes, yes. that's what he's trying to do. Yes, ma'am, you are 57 years old. Mm-hmm. Do nobody wants to see you twerking, especially at Some, fifty-seven? Somebody do because they were going viral. They ended up on your for you page. <laughs> I I'm still know. waiting for my viral video. I'm still <laughs> waiting to go viral. Look, all the stuff that we didn't said and did, we ain't never gonna go viral. <laughs> <laughs> it'll probably be. It'll probably be at some video that we think is innocuous or not the one that, and that'll be the one to go viral. Oh, absolutely. When I look yeah. at the YouTube spikes of mm-hmm. what what gets a lot of views and what doesn't, I was like, we weren't, that wasn't even nothing. Like, why right. Why is that getting views? And then there's right. some I put out there and I'm like, oh, this is going to kill them. And it, it don't pop. And I'm just it, like, I don't get you guys. What yeah. do you want? You know what? what? Do I don't you care. Want? I was like, you know what? I don't care what you want. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And either it's going to pop or it's not. But I ain't going to sell my soul. It's, it feels like the most boring stuff gets the most likes. <laughs> some of this stuff on TikTok, like I guess there's some there's some uh, girl, woman, she's a girl on TikTok that uh, is doing, is just blowing up TikTok. I don't know what her name is, but she does TikTok lives and be killing them with money. She makes a lot of money and they do all these little, you send gifts and they got all these little expressions, of, you know, or things that they do after each gift. And I'm like, yo, you know what? I don't care how much money you're paying me. That's tiring to one, yeah. memorize all the little different things I have for all the different gifts and to keep doing them because keep people keep popping gifts. I'm like, you know what? Just let me talk. And if y'all want to give me gifts, give me gifts. You got to do, do the little thing. That's what the people are paying things. for. My, my. That's what they putting the shmoney up for. <laughs> no, <laughs> you gotta put you gotta put the little what is it a cowboy hat or whatever the little things that pop up when people send you gifts. You gotta do all that. What did Richard Pryor say in the Mac? I ain't Rich. I ain't Carl Lewis, and I ain't running nowhere. Look, I ain't Michael Jackson, and I ain't dancing. I ain't singing. <laughs> I ain't fetching stepping for no gifts. <laughs> you go. You go. You listen when you get a taste of that viral life. You'd be surprised what you're going to do. I don't think, if somebody asked me a question the other day, what would you do for a certain amount of money? And, and, and you know, guys always pushing it too damn far. Yes. So they was like, how far would it have to be for you to give another guy a head? And I was like, there's no amount of money that you could offer me that I would do that. There's no amount of money. And it was like a billion dollars. A billion dollars. dollars. I was there just about no, to say. I said, there is no amount. You could put the billion dollars in front of me in cash. Yeah. I still wouldn't do it. Like that like money is cool. I like money, yeah. but there's certain things that I'm just not going to do for money. There's a lot I'll do for $50. <laughs> so, I know I know somebody <laughs> offered me <laughs> If somebody offered me a billion dollars? Oh, a billion? Okay. Well, we've known that you could always be bought. 
Yes. We've known that since kids. Yes. I can be bought. <laughs> and, I, and I always have some sort of money making scheme or something. Like I everybody knows this. So so yeah, no. Are you kidding me? I don't know what I wouldn't do. I think the question would be, what wouldn't you do? <laughs> For a certain amount there's, of money. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that I wouldn't do. There's that I, I I don't know. I don't know if it's pride or this, ego. It's literally or what. just one thing. I wouldn't kill anyone. That's the only thing. Shoot. Well, okay, time. You out. couldn't you couldn't hire me uh, for an, murder. An innocent person. No, you couldn't hire me to murder someone. An innocent you couldn't murder an innocent bystander attack i couldn't pass. murder anybody shoot let me tell you something there's a lot of people out there no, i mean i'm not condoning murder i'm not saying I, i'm out here <laughs> murder i'm just saying if you offer me enough just money saying. I'm, you offer me enough money to take out a person who is bad oh yeah i would have no problem doing that no problem uh, so so you would dexter somebody <laughs> yes well <laughs> dexter broke his code a lot oh, okay. <laughs> De- have you ever watched the show no never dexter- seen a single episode dexter broke his code a lot he he said he had a code but i was like well that person was innocent you ain't did your due diligence to check and see if they was guilty <laughs> or not you just got mad and killed this person no you are just serial killer that's yes, what you are yes yeah uh, no I, like, take somebody's life uh, under certain circumstances look they have to be guilty of something and i have to get paid I'm not, I wouldn't get, there's no amount of money for me to walk down the street and just an innocent bystander to shoot. There, there's nothing that you could offer me. Yeah, but I can't uh, do it. A pedophile? If you was like, that person is a pedophile and has hurt kids. Oh, homie, oh, I'm going to do this well, one free of charge. Now, yeah, now, now I don't know. See? Now, and, now I might. Now I'm going detour. Okay. Because your, cause your connection just jacked up. Okay. So once again, we write in the same predicament as we was last week with your faulty ass internet. There's nothing wrong with my internet. Okay. Well, all right. Well, no, it's just like there's nothing I could do to convince you. <laughs> just <laughs> well. why okay. is it why is it only uh, the only time I ever have problems with the internet suspiciously is it involves you? How I often are think- you doing these video calls? Of a million times a day. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know what I got going on. <laughs> How, answer the question. How often are you doing these video recordings in a day? Not at all. But that's <laughs> not. <laughs> so, so, do you think it, maybe it's not my internet? Maybe it's the platform. Maybe it's the recording platform. No, maybe because it's that. nobody else seems to have an issue. Well, I don't know. Or if they do have an issue, is it's because if they do have an issue, it's because their internet is piss poor. No, my internet's great. Okay. I All literally right. pay a, a lot of money to have good internet. Well, speaking of people that don't want to ever admit that they're wrong, we're going to talk about the the, the government of Arkansas next. <laughs> Sis. They doing it again. I'm sick of it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Arkansas Department of Education has recently decided that students in the Arkansas Public High Schools enrolled in advanced placement African-American studies courses would not be able to receive credit towards graduation for taking this course. This decision came as teachers and students across the state were preparing to start the school year and several high schools had planned to offer the course this school year. They dropped the ball on them right before school started. Mm -hmm. Uh, The education department's move comes after Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Y'all might know her as the heifer that was the lion uh, Trump press secretary. uh, Yes. Signed an executive order in January prohibiting indoctrination and critical race theory in schools. African-American history is neither one of those things. First of all, let's be clear. School is, by definition, indoctrination. That's the mm-hmm. that that is exactly what our education system is. <laughs> it is well, it's already education. that they say they call it education. No, you're, you're it, it is indoctrination into a, an American way of of thinking a way of working through problems, a way of understanding history. All of it is indoctrination. 
That's number one. Number two, just say we don't like black people and we are just tired of them and we just don't like black people at all. Like, just say that. I don't. I don't think it's we don't like black people. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't think it's that. No, okay. it's not it's, totally. We're, not we're, totally. It's it is part part of it is Partly, that. Yeah, part of it is that, but not um, totally. But a a large part of it is we're tired of being uncomfortable for being white. Mm-hmm. And and for those people that say, well, they feel guilty it, that talking about this stuff makes them feel guilty. I would say this: you benefit from all the privileges that your forefathers gave to you. Mm -hmm. You talk about it all the time, your freedoms. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about people who are defending the freedoms, because once again, they're just defending the freedoms that you were already given. You can't bask in the benefit and the goodness of the forefathers without acknowledging the atrocities. You can't just take the good and not take the bad. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Either take none of it, or take all of it. So if you feel so much pride swelling your heart for being American and being a patriot, recognize all the bad as well. And that comes with guilt, pride and guilt. That is what it is. Yeah. That is it's what un- it is. It's unavoidable because the past, if we are looking at it objectively, was trash. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was straight up horrible and you need to reckon with that and reconcile that. Like there is no escape from an uncomfortable past because that it happened. Mm -hmm. It really happened. And there are people who still to this day, they call it um, post-slave syndrome, I think. Don't quote me on that. But there, there is still a generational trauma that we carry. Yeah. From what we went through during enslavement. But not only enslavement, everything after that as well. Because, you know, what I always tell people all every day is I have my mom and dad's birthdays tatted on my arm. They were born in 57 and 58, which means that I am the first one of that generation mm-hmm. that was born with all of her rights given by the government. My parents were not born with all of their rights given. Right. Because the, the Civil Rights Act wasn't until 1965. The Voting Rights Act wasn't until 1967. And guess what? They still didn't even start integration of schools until the, they started it in certain areas in the 60s, but they really didn't push it, push it until the 70s, which means that my parents basically weren't getting equal ec- education all the way up through high school. Up through high school. So don't mm-hmm. tell me. And, you know, I have a friend of mine that was like, I grew up poor. And I was like, no, there's a difference between being poor and broke. Right. I was like, you had your own room in a in a house. That's not yeah. poor. That's not poor. <laughs> That's not poor. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money because, you know, my parents messed up a little bit of money. Well, and then they wouldn't spend a lot of money. Well, I was like, that's being broke and then being cheap. That's not yeah. poor. That's not poor. That's yeah. not poor. It's not the same thing. Yeah. And well, I had to go to, you know, college, you know, was real poor. Everybody's poor in college. Everybody's you know, poor in college. I had, everybody's I had, everybody's living off cup of noodles and water. Right. Everybody. Everybody's poor in college. It's not the same thing. I had to work my way up. Well, no. Okay. Because once again, you came from a family that had a house and mm-hmm. you had a bed. You had your own bedroom. I was like, you know how yeah. old I was until I got my own bedroom? 13. Right. 12, technically, if you want, you want to count the way and I, you know, finagled you out of your room. Mm-hmm. Which you did. I did. I did do that. Yeah. Uh, but we're not done here. Um, the Advanced Placement African American Studies course is a new course that was being developed by the College Board. So, this course was being developed by the College Board in Arkansas. Scholars, yes, yes. legitimate scholars said, "No, this is good to teach the kids." Not not just in Arkansas. It was, it was a nationwide program. It's in, I think, I want to say like sixty schools. It's the same one that Florida, Florida, yeah, had them. Gu- basically, they caved to that political pressure, College Board, and gutted the program in Florida. Completely changed what was really a a gorgeous program. I mean, comprehensive. Like it, it was, I would have loved to have taken that in high school. 
But the problem is, and yeah, I, I wasn't able to take African American studies until college. And when I took when I took the course, once again, remember everybody, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a historian. So when I took the course, I was like, that was the first time I learned about the Tulsa massacre. Mm -hmm. And I only learned about it because of that course. Yeah. Most people learned about the Tulsa massacre because of a TV show on HBO called Watchmen. Mm -hmm. That's when they learned about it. I didn't know anybody, anything about this. That's a problem. Yeah. There are so many massacres that have happened in our country's history that have been whitewashed and covered up and not been told. And, and I get it. You don't want to look at past situations that might be traumatic to you because your people enslaved another group of people and it makes you feel guilty. But what happens to you in your personal life when you don't address your past traumas? They always make a, their way into your into your present. Mental health therapists will tell you all the time, if you do not address your past dramas, they are going to affect you in your present and future. Mm -hmm. So you can sweep this under the rug and not deal with it and not want to talk about it and not learn from it. Okay. It's going to affect you later. Trust me. And if it's not you, it's going to be your kids and your grandkids and so on. And, because and suppressing knowledge has never been a, a tactic that works. It is never book burning, all of this, this has never been a tactic that works. Well, Eventually people rise up of the threat of being suppressed or having knowledge suppressed or repressed. The only time this has worked is during Nazi Germany. Now, Americans, if you want to be the same as Nazi Germany, <laughs> right. keep on going with the way you're doing. Because that's it's they're doing, they did exactly the same thing. They whitewashed history. They made they made themselves the the victors of everything. They banned books, burned books, persecuted anybody that stood up to them. Ah, that just sounds eerily similar because yeah. I feel like they're playing because the, that's the playbook they're using. Yeah, yeah, that's the playbook they use. It's a playbook yeah. actually throughout history. It's the playbook they've always used. Yes, Daughters of Confederacy. I said once again, there's a remix, and it's the Moms of Liberty. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So you want to whitewash history? Okay. I tell you what, in the black community, we're going to keep passing it on. We're going to keep knowing we are. history. Right. We, yeah. We're going to keep knowing the history. Uh, so because good luck to you guys. It. Because we're actually living it. Every day. So Every single day. In order to for us to operate in this country, we have to know more than you. Mm -hmm. We have to. We have to be able to navigate both of the Americas, the one we live in and the one you live in. And that Alabama boat brawl should tell y'all something. We tired. We ain't going back. <laughs> y'all going to have a fight <laughs> on your hands. Yes. <laughs> we, we, y'all going to have a fight on your hands. And, I, and I'm sorry, but we live through, I've said this before, we live through enslavement, reconstruction, the civil rights era. And made it all the way to the presidency. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're too. We're not we're too, going anywhere. <laughs> we endure so much and still come out on top. Yeah. And I wonder if the roles were reversed. Could you? I don't know. Y'all are kind of sensitive and soft. I'm not talking about all white people. Let me make that clear. I'm talking about the people that don't want to deal with history and the reality of still stuff that are going on today. Yes. We're they talking those... about the people who are being willfully ignorant. Yes. Yes. Not, not once again, I, I feel like I have to say this all the time. Yeah. It's not, it's not all white people that we're talking about. Some no. of my closest friends are white. <laughs> I've, I've had three white people over my house. Right. I've been <laughs> married to a white person. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, we all know there, we, there you do not go. We always say you can't, 
use proximity to blackness to absolve yourself of racism, the reverse is also true. Wait, we can't mean? just say, I know a couple of white people. I, yeah, I know. I'm, I was absolve- doing that. Yes. Yeah, I know. I was doing I that. I know you were being disingenuous. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're well, okay, that's clear because you got to put that out for the people out there like that because people are dumb as hell. Let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. I talked about on my show on Tuesday the Melly Mel and Eminem beef. Have yes. you have you heard about this? Have you seen it? I've heard a little bit about it. All right. Well, Melly Mel's rap uh, disc was really horrible, and Eminem was Eminem. Like he's yeah. one of the greatest lyricists of all time. Yeah. And the reason why Melly Mel had a problem with it, it was like he's white. That's the only reason why he's fifth on the top fifty uh, greatest rappers. I'm like, no, no. Because he can wrap his ass off. He off. really, really, really can. <laughs> like, like, I mean, p- a period. His lyricism, delivery, everything. I mean, he really, really is good. Like, I, really, I don't, like I don't, he deserves I don't, to be. A, he deserves to be on the list. And I was like, five is about right. Like, he's in that range, like three, four, five, six, seven. Like, once you get once you get past the top two, mm-hmm. then everything else is. It's like. If, if you compare the greatest basketball players of all time, you know, it's always three. It's yeah. MJ, Kobe, and LeBron. After you get past that, it's just all, a you know, they're all yeah. bunched together. But yeah. it, Eminem is not the top tier because for me, it's still Rakim is still number one. But anyway, so I was saying, at first I started saying it's kind of reverse racism. And then I was like, no, it's not because black people don't have the power structure in this in this situation. Mm-hmm. And, and people were like, the power has nothing to do with racism. And I was like, it's kind of literally, it's in, the, literally in, in the definition. definition. It, it yeah. talks about, you know, uh, racism towards a marginalized group. Yeah. That's, that's literally what it is. And a marginalized, when was the last time in the history of the world has a marginalized group had the power? Right. <laughs> so if you have intellectual thought then you know what the definition means. Yes. No. Melly Mel is being bigoted. Yes. Absolutely. If black people held the power in hip hop, then then you could say that they were being racist. But guess what? They don't hold the power in hip hop because the majority of record execs are white. Mm-hmm. So they don't hold the power. They just, it's just, it's kind of like basketball. All the owners, the majority of the owners are white. Mm-hmm. They actually hold the power. The play, the majority of the players are just black. Same yeah. thing in hip hop. The so people not, who sign the checks are always the one that are, right. that are the true power. So like. Melly Mel was not being racist. He was being bigoted. Mm-hmm. And anybody who says Eminem is only where he is because he's white, it's not being racist. They're being bigoted. Please, ladies and gentlemen, pick up a dictionary and read the book. Yeah, you know it's it's not really that difficult. Like those it's people, not hard. those people that argue with me. You know, I have friends in my life and they'll say stuff. Did you hear about this and that? And and I was like, where did you get that from? Oh, I read it in an article. And I was like, did the article say that? Well, that's what the headline said. And I'm like, so you didn't read the article. You're just going off the headline? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what the headline says. I was like, you're you got to read the article. Yeah, you got to read, 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 read the article. Like the headlines are always sensationalized to get yes. you to read the article. Yeah. You don't base fact off of headlines the line the, the line is literally not judging a book by its cover like i know that that means you know you shouldn't judge someone based on how they look but it's also <laughs> a book yeah, a book <laughs> don't just look at the cover open the book open the damn book take a read and if these people that are so against African American studies picked up a book and actually read and not gotten excerpts off of Google or what other people say and mm-hmm. read the books, they might learn something. Yeah. And they might realize there's no indoctrination. It's a teaching of your country's history. Right. What do you what exactly do you think? That's the question. What do you think we're indoctrinating them for? Yeah. Is it? Is what it... do you think the end result is that you that you don't want t- us to teach these courses? What do you think the indoctrination is for? Empathy? 
Um, because if what you're trying to avoid is white people being empathetic to the plight of marginalized groups, this, then you saying the quiet part out loud. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it could be that. I think that that that's a very, I never even thought about that. I think that it could be that. I think it also could be. Think about what influences their kids. Mm. You know, we just brought up hip hop, right? Mm-hmm. Hip hop is not just in the black community. No, it dictates youth in America. Yes, the way that I hear Gen Z speak, like the language that they use is born 100% out of black culture and AAVE. Let's 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 just be clear. Uh everything that's ever been popular in this country has been influenced by the black community. People yeah. think people think rock music was started with white people. Nope. No. It was started by black people. Mm-hmm. Country ain't, ain't nothing but bluegrass and that was literally started by black people in the Appalachians. Like mm-hmm. it is it is everything that you think of as Americana mm-hmm. was actually borrowed or stolen from black people. We influence culture. Not only that, it's how networks get started. You ever okay. notice later yes. networks? They start out with black content. Fox, Fox WB. Is the, Fox, Fox started it. WB UPN. UPN, CW, they always, they well, all start. CW was WB and UPN merged together to create yes. CW. Yes. But they both started out as black networks. Right, with black programming. Yes. To draw people to the networks and then they slowly switch it over to more and more white programming or white yeah. led uh, cast, cast and programming. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what the point of what we were saying that was. I don't know, but that my black people influence culture, and right? That with black people, that that could be a fear yeah. that you lose that white people feel like they would be losing their culture mm-hmm. the more they let people into our culture because they'll also realize that a lot of their culture is just borrowed or stolen from our culture. Yeah, and and then it. What what is identity? I asked this question on my Tuesday episode. What is the what is American, mm-hmm. right? Like what is what is American food? American food is basically remixed from other ethnicities. Yes, like well, you even could our, say Southern food or comfort food, but again, that comes from brought, black people. Yeah, so well, okay, but that's still technically American, right? But people yes. were bringing up what's American food, and a lot of people said barbecue, and I was like, okay, you're right, barbecue. But other than that like there's nothing else when you and we take food from other cultures and just remix it and make it american when you went to italy it was that food over in italy was nothing like italian food here in america no not even close chinese food in china is nothing like nothing. chinese food in america nothing. but mexican food our neighbor is nothing like no nope. mexican food in america no nope. we take things and remix it and there's nothing wrong with that if that's the American way to take something and remix it, hell, remixes are cool. That's the that's the whole purpose of the melting pot. Yes, we were so you were supposed to come here. Well, supposed to supposed to come here, and it would all just be a melting pot of cultures, and it ain't turn out that way. <laughs> well, no, it's. It is that way. It the, is whether people want. To, I just, I just gave you examples. But, I mean, it, but it should be our pride as a country that we be. are a mix of different cultures. No, but we have to. It has but, everything. We have to be the best at everything, and everything has to come from us. We have mm-hmm. to be the world leader. We can't be a follower. And if we remix something, it means we just followed something. Mm-hmm. So we like lying to ourselves. This country has always lied to itself about what it is, which is but, the reason why history is so very, very important to learn. But it's just interesting that the things that are uniquely American, the things that we export to the world in terms of culture, music, art, any of that comes from who? Black folks. I don't want to go say that. But, but that's true. That's true. You got people. There was something I saw on Instagram. They were in Japan. 
and uh, Japanese people were eating and this wasn't, these weren't tourists. These were Japanese people that mm-hmm. were just in the area. And one of them was wearing a Wu-Tang shirt. Mm-hmm. And then they didn't know each other. They were sitting in town. They was like, Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to quit. Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> and that's, that last I checked, all the members of the Wu-Tang Clan, absolutely black. They are definitely <laughs> black. Yes. But that culture and identity made it over to Japan. You yeah. know what I did not see? What? Who's a country singer? I don't know. Timothy McGraw? Sure. Is that a country singer? Yes. Oh, that's good. I brought up Timothy McGraw. because I don't know fan- that he goes by Timothy. I think it's just Tim McGraw. Well, it's a fantastic segue to the blind side. And that's how next. Is that, how is that a fantastic segue? Because he was the dad. He was the dad. In- oh, yeah. yeah. He was, <laughs> he the, was dad the dad in the movie. Okay, uh, okay. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that was an accident, but that was a good accident. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the blind. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Do you have anything else to add to this, uh, to the Arkansas? Hey, these are Arkansas people, man. You got anything to add to these Arkansas? Well, I mean, it's Arkansas. It's Florida. It's this places. I mean, it's not like these are... <laughs> These are surprises. You know, when you hear the state, you'd be like, here we go. Mm-hmm. What are we what what's what what racist thing is happening now? Yeah. What anti LGBTQ thing is happening now? Like you when you hear certain states, you just you just know. So it's nothing so it's nothing surprising. Um the sad thing is that they're really depriving. It's funny because they love when we produce things like hidden figures and stuff like that. And they, they love that, but it's like, you wouldn't know anything about that part of our history unless you took AP African-American studies. Oh, we'll get into that in the next segment, but that all has to come with the white savior. Mm. It has to come with a white savior. That's the only way. Yes. They, that's the only way they'll learn about something. Anyway, oh, white people saved them. Yeah. White people saved them. Oh, John, John Glenn, uh, John Glenn treated him with respect. You see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with identifying with the good guy. <laughs> you, can, you, <laughs> like, can, you can do that. That's yeah. okay. Like, you can take them under the way, even, yes. though that, even though that wasn't true. Everything yeah, that was portrayed no. in that movie, like, wasn't true. Like, uh, you no, know, John Glenn that, wasn't a real person. He was a, what do you call it, an amalgamation? That's no, not right No, John word. Glenn is a real person. No. The, the Kevin Costner character? No, 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 no. The astronaut. The Kevin Costner character, yes, was an amalgamation. Okay, oh, okay yeah. The I'm astronaut. talking about but John we, Glenn, the astronaut. But we don't know that he was that nice. He did ask for the lady to recalculate it, but it wasn't as dramatic as that. But the Kevin Costner character was, is you call it amalgamation? What do you call it when you, when you take a whole bunch of characters and put them in one in a movie? Yeah, it's an amalgamation. I didn't know if I said it right. I said it yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Education, ladies and gentlemen. Education. That's what happens when you go to school. That's what, <laughs> when, that's what happens when you go to school. You could think that maybe you what you said might be right. Right. <laughs> I love that in the moment, in real time, we're watching you grapple with this. But that's... that's, 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 that's <laughs> I wasn't, you threw I wasn't, it out there. You said it. You were right. I Congratulations. Did. No, I was right. I I knew yeah. what I was saying, but was still unsure about it. You know, these big words, you know, I'm not an English major. No, I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah. Amalgamation is a big word too. Um, and, and it was. And I, you know, I mumble over my word. I got a speech impediment. <laughs> don't don't judge me. I'm just out here trying to live my best life and be no, the best that I can be. I, I, f- I feel you. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, white saviors next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay. I said it. We're going to talk about white saviors next. Uh, Mm -hmm. Everybody remembers the movie The Blind Side. Did you ever watch that? I did see that um, by accident. There's a fly in here. Okay. Killing me. All right. Uh, So if y'all see me swatting, (laughs) that's why. I don't know how it got in here. Well, The Blind Side was a movie about Michael Orr and bringing up (laughs) his, his lifestyle as kind of like a poor and homeless kid and uh but he was big mm-hmm. he was good at football so this white family took him in and gave him a home and had him sign his life away uh like devil's advocate but mm-hmm. um he's recently come out and the family is i pronounce it michael Orr. even though if you look up his name o-h-e-r it sounds like it should be whore no Her? no, no. It doesn't, doesn't seem like it should be or 
it or might, is O R. It looks like O'Hare. Mm. It doesn't look like whore. Uh, okay, and the family. I think the family's name is it's Tui. Tui. It's Tui. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he's filed a lawsuit against Sean and Leanne Tui. That was Tim McGraw and Sandra Bullock's character in The Blind mm-hmm. Side. The mm-hmm. family who took him in when he was a teenager. Or claims that he was tricked into signing the conservatorship, believing that he was going to be adopted by the Tuies and that he never received fair payment for the movie that he was portrayed in. In response to the petition, the Tuies described themselves as heartbroken over these events and in a statement issued on their behalf by attorney uh, Martin Singer, they also alleged a shakedown that Orr demanded $15 million from them and threatened to plan a negative press story if they didn't pay up. The couple said that they have always been upfront with or about the conservatorship and that any profit from the blind side has been split within the family equally. Um, so when I watched the movie, mm-hmm. I said, this shit don't sound right. Right. <laughs> as soon as I watched the movie. So me yeah. being who I am and something I encourage other people to do, if a movie is based on a true story, realize the key words that are in that sentence based yeah. on a true story. Yes. That means that there have been liberties taken of mm-hmm. that true story. For example, he was like, I didn't need to be explained the rules of football as a teenager. I knew what how football was played. But they but they show him later, like in as a teenager, and they have to explain this his position. He's like, no, they portray him have- as really dumb. They portray yes. him as a dumb, a big black dumbass kid. That's how yes. they portray him in the movie. Yes. Um, and it wasn't only that. He was like, I wasn't told how to sleep in a bed. I know how to sleep in a bed. There's a yes. scene where she's where she's like, you know, that the bed is yours. You sleep in the bed. It's like what? He, so he was really. He was really annoyed when the movie came out because it portrayed him as dumb. And he was like, there's a difference between not having the education and being dumb. Yes. I, he was bounced around from house to house. He was homeless. He went to, I think they said, 11 different schools in his first nine years of education. So, yeah, he was probably behind. He had to repeat first and second grade. Well, because... The kid never stayed in a school long enough for them to even, you know what I'm saying? So the the way that they portrayed him, like he was slow. I do remember that. Yeah. And they I portrayed was like, him as slow. Yeah. And he did, he couldn't do nothing. Um, but it's funny because the two E's have definitely benefited from knowing him. Yes. And it and it's also funny that they they had him sign a conservatorship. Mm-hmm. Now, most people. I would say 99% of the population out there in the world did not know what a conservatorship was. We all learned what a conservatorship was during the Britney situation. Yes. That's happened over the last couple of years. Mm Because I had no idea what a conservatorship was. No. So they said that they had him sign the conservatorship so that he could get into school. There's already been lawyers in the state of Tennessee that have said, well, they said they needed to do that because he was already 18. There's already mm-hmm. been lawyers that said, no, you can adopt somebody yes. that's 18, that that wasn't necessarily the case. Yes. Then they tried to say, well, that was what we needed to do to get him into school. And, and other people that have done college was like, no, that wasn't needed. So instead of adopting him, they signed, they had him sign a legal conservatorship. Here's the part that pisses me off. There are people out there that are coming out now saying white people because he's black and the family is white. There are white people coming out saying he knew the whole time what a conservatorship was and they're half right. This is his own words in his memoir that was written in 2011. And this is what they're using as evidence. Mm-hmm. In the 2011 memoir, I beat the odds from homeless to the blind side. Michael Orr wrote about his conservatorship with the Tui family. He wrote that he became a legal member of the Tui family and that it felt like a familiar formality since he had been part of the family for more than a year at that point. He also wrote that Sean and Leanne Tui would be named as his legal conservators and that they explained to him that it was means pretty much the exact same thing as adoptive parents, but that the laws were, were written uh, in a way that take it take his age into account. Mm-hmm. These were her. These were 
their words. So instead of explaining to them, hey, this is illegal conservative shit, which means that we have control over your money. Yes. And any future earnings that you have. Yes. But it's exactly like, a, they didn't say that. They just said, oh, it's exactly like adoption. This is 2011. Yeah. So he knew that it, it was illegal conservatorship. But once again, nobody knew what a conservatorship was, mm-hmm. right? So if you say, oh, this is just like, this is the same thing as adoption. It's just because of your age. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, we family. Yeah. You adopted and you can, me. I'm part of the family. You can tell in the way that he describes it in the prior, in the, in the book, he says, I became a legal part of their family, but it felt like just a formality. He, in his mind, even in writing the book at that time, he thought the conservatorship was just like him being adopted. That's that. So when the people are trying to throw that out there, it's like he knew. No, he did not know. No. Nobody would know. He was 18 years old, first of all. Mm-hmm. 2011, he's older. Even in 2011, if you said conservatorship to me and you said, yeah, it's just like being adopted. I'd be like, oh, okay, I trust them. Y'all took me in. Y'all my family. Yeah, yeah. Y'all got my back. Right. It is just now, now that I, this is my own interpretation. He was like, wait a minute. What is this Britney Spears conservatorship? They have control over your money. Well, wait a minute. I've been playing football all this time. I kind of pay attention to my money, but I've got these contracts. Most of my life is built around football. And people out there are going to be like, well, he's just playing a sport. No, I was about to cuss, but I'm not. No, Mm -hmm. people, he's not just playing a a sport. It's a job. He's got Mm -hmm. practice. He's got OTAs. He's got to study the playbook. He's got meetings. It it is a full time. It is more of a job than what you people go out there and do every day. I guarantee you, you think it's just a sport that they just go out there and play. No, they do not. And it's year round. Yeah. It's year round. Even during the off season, they still have to do work. Mm-hmm. And they're more intelligent and better in their field than you are in your field. I right. guarantee you, because they're the top of the top. So he's not paying. He knows he probably has accountants and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Right. So he's just paying attention to money that's coming in. But he's been saying for a long time, yo, it's been an issue about the proceeds from this movie. Right. This movie won Oscars. Sandra Bullock got an Oscar, which, by the way, Stop trying to take away her Oscar. She has nothing to do with the fact that yeah. Two E's was shady. Her her performance in a fictional film, because it wasn't a documentary, y'all. It was like, not a let's, documentary. Let's be clear. Her performance in a fictional film has nothing to do with any of this stuff. And I guarantee you, if she knew the true story, she probably wouldn't have done that movie because she would have been probably like, not. something shady is going on here. Mm-hmm. So for all y'all people trying to defend the Two E's, let's, let's make it clear. they In the movie... And in the book, they said they adopted him. Yes. That was a lie. That was a lie. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on my uh, Maury Povich. not right. Michael Tooley. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be on my uh, Maury Povich right now. Yeah. They said that they adopted him in both the book and the movie. The lie detector test lie. determined. That was a lie. A hundred percent. They said he knew about the conservatorship. The oh. lie detector set says... Maybe, but he didn't know the whole truth about the conservatorship. He didn't know the whole truth. He was not they say, told the whole truth. They say that they they split the money and from the proceeds of the movie. The, the lie detector, detector test t- says that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. So who am I going to believe? And I'm not taking black or white in this. I'm just no. taking. I'm taking. If you look at it from objectively and use common sense, mm-hmm. these people lied to him about what he was signed as an 18 year old kid that he was trusting them mm-hmm. and believed in them and felt like a part of the family. Mm-hmm. And now he's probably going through accounting and realizing some money is missing. And he's claiming it's about 15 mil. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry. If you owe me 15 mil, I'm going to call you all out your name sideways. Yes. And I don't care if I Period. got 15 mil in the bank. If you took 15 mil from me, I'm going to need all 15 mil of that money back. Every single red cent. Yes. Like Jay-Z said, if you owe me a dollar, you ain't giving me nine. I want that whole dollar. Mm-hmm. Period. 90 cent. It was 90 cent. Yeah, that's what if you owe me a dollar is 90 cent. Yeah. That, so that's the Michael Orr situation. It just pissed me off when I was reading it. Because somebody brought it up to me and it was like, he knew about it. And I was like, you didn't read everything. You're reading excerpts. 
yes. from a book and it's clear that you didn't even read the excerpt. You let somebody tell you what the excerpt was because if you read the excerpt, you would hear in his own words that he thought the legal conservatorship was nothing more than just an adoption process because he was 18 years old because of age situation. And I just find it very hypocritical that uh, Sean Tui said, it's upsetting to think we would make money off of our children. But if that wasn't the case, why did you have the conservatorship? Right. Right. Why did you have the conservatorship? Because you knew that if you put enough behind this young man, that he was going to go pro. And there's so many people connected with this. The author of the book knew uh, Sean Tui. Hugh Freeze was the coach for his high school coach, has made a college career, and everybody has found out how shady he is as a person. Mm -hmm. There's so many people connected to this that is shady as hell. But I just go back to the point of, this is the main point, that you can't dispute that the Tuis have claimed in books, movies, and in speaking engagements that they adopted him. Yes, he but believed he was adopted. He believed that he was adopted. And they have portrayed themselves to the public as saying that they adopted him. Mm -hmm. So not only did he did they lie to him, they've been lying to us the entire time. So why would you ever give them the benefit of a doubt? Right. They started the whole thing on a lie. Yeah. Sorry. But but but, but you know what? People out there, they want to believe what they want to believe, and they don't care if people get, they don't care if people lie to them. Mm -hmm. Case in point, former President Trump. <laughs> Diamond number four. <laughs> I, I was going to talk about it, but like, I mean, seriously, it's just another indictment. It's but it's a another, Rico. It's, it's a Rico, though. It's another indictment, but you know, hey, right. we can't let it, we can't let it go past. All right, so it, it, former President Trump got a RICO charge mm -hmm. in the state of Georgia. It's a state case, but it's so many uh, people that are connected. There's so many co-defendants, like 13 or 14 co-defendants. Mm -hmm. And I was watching news earlier today, and these legal fees is going to cost. Yeah. Giuliani, but don't worry. Don't worry. It's all, of his, uh, all of his fans will... Foot that pay bill. for him, mm -hmm. but not his co defendants. Giuliani has been yeah. reported to go to him and be like, Yo, man, can you help me with some of these legal bills? And he was like, No, nah. <laughs> no, nah. which is dumb because everybody that's ever been wrapped up in a Rico case always pays for the for their co defendants. If they're the top dog in that organization, they pay for the co defendants because if you don't, them co defendants are going to turn on you. Yeah, it look, it's look, running through 19 defendants, mm. more than two dozen unnamed co-conspirators, and the group's actions in over half a dozen jurisdictions. And that's all going to get wrapped up into the federal case. So some of these people are for real going to jail. N not Trump. No. They'll never go to jail. No. Um, and, and one of my friends, one of my friends was like, I don't want to put it out there. I don't. But it don't matter if Rudy get convicted because I don't think he's going to make it. I was just <laughs> like, what? I was like, what? Fair. He's like, I don't think he's going to make it. Fair. And I looked Fair. it up. I was like, well, how old is Rudy? He, he was like, he got to be like 85, 86. Rudy Giuliani is 79. He looks ancient. <laughs> he is only two years older than Trump. And this is the one thing I give Trump. For 77, that man got a lot of energy. Yeah. I don't know what he be doing. I don't know uh, what it is. I guess stupid make you got a lot of energy. I, I guess. guess. If, you, if you're stupid, you ain't got to think about nothing else. You don't get tired. I guess. Ign <laughs> Ignorance keeps you young, ladies and gentlemen. So stop they, reading books. They say, well, we already know they ain't reading books. <laughs> we already know y'all ain't, reading, they ain't, yeah. they ain't reading no books. <laughs> ain't nobody, ain't nobody no, out there reading books. Ain't nobody reading. Am I the and only I'll person be, that's still reading books? I, I'll be real honest. You know, I talk a lot of ish about people reading books. And I'll be honest, I don't read a lot of books anymore. Mm -hmm. But I read a lot of articles. And if something interests me, like uh, Hidden Figures, when I watched that movie, mm -hmm. I had to do a deep dive to find out what was real and what wasn't. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I found out that everybody praised 
And one person that works for NASA was like, this really happened when he hit down the, the colored only uh, sign in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that never happened. No, because the character is not even real. So, no, yes, that, 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 didn't that never happened. But, but, but they the people have to love have, they have the to white have savior. The white savior. Yes. And that's the reason why people like the blind side. It was the white savior. The white mm-hmm. family helped this poor broke down boy that wasn't going to amount to anything and they gave him a home and he ended up being an NFL superstar and it was all because of them. Yeah. This is so dangerous minds. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go with Michelle Pfeiffer. She was doing right by them kids. No, she wasn't. Teaching them. What was the literature going to do? They live in the hood. Literature, literature helped you. I wasn't living in the hood. Not no more, but at one point we absolutely were. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> and we weren't at that point anymore when you was reading literature. But before that, <laughs> we was not living well. And that's uh, another one. Another one is Freedom Writers. That was uh, that was. Um, oh, what's her name? She was she played a boxer that one time. In that other Hillary movie. Swank. Yeah, Hillary Swank was a teacher she's teaching inner city kids poetry. Oh, that ain't nothing as bad as finding Forrester. Oh, finding Forrester. Forrester. <laughs> Sean Connery. Sean Connery, and a, a, a recluse that was this brilliant author, and he's going to save the black kid. He wrote one book. He wrote one book. He wrote one book. One book. book. <laughs> Oh, I we can run down a whole list of white savior movies, but why don't y'all just go check out a few? And if you're white out there, look through the look through not the white savior eyes, look through our eyes telling you that it's a white savior movie, yes. and then you'll see, oh yeah, that that isn't that isn't a good representation. No. Oh yeah, that is that is riding on um negative tropes of of black people or brown people. And yes. oh, they only made their way through because a white person came and saved them. That's what we talk about with white saviors. Yes. And the only white savior that we ever know about is Abraham Lincoln, which, by the way, we found out Abraham was actually part black. It's documented now. I feel like that's true. No, 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 no. It's documented. It was part of a group. I found out somebody hit me on YouTube and told me that the name is actually derogatory. So I'm not going to say what the name is, but it's a group of people that came out of Appalachia. It's all on the Tuesday episode Mm -hmm. Um, that were of it was basically male African descent Mm -hmm. and female European descent. Okay. (laughs) So, so in the 16, 17, 1800s in the Appalachian mountains, mountains, it was black men still finding white women to marry. Yeah. (laughs) And they created this. It was like 40 families that stretch out through the Appalachians, through Mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee, the Carolinas and Virginia. Mm -hmm. And they did a a Dan uh, ancestry thing because Mm -hmm. they're basically black people but because they were black during this time Mm -hmm. they would say they were everything else but black and they could kind of pass as everything else but black because they were lighter skin and it kept going out for generation to generation to the point where they were just like you're white just say that you're white yeah some of the names on the list that were part of this community that came from african people Mm -hmm. sub-sahara africa by the way Mm -hmm. did the ancestry and found out that's where these people are um Abraham Lincoln. He looked black. Elvis. Again, not surprising. Cher. Again, also not surprising. I've seen and, Cher do the robot with Michael Jackson. Exactly. And but it was good. Here's the kicker. Tom Hanks. That also not surprising. <laughs> 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 yeah, that all yes, and so, we'll be more than happy to welcome them into the fold. So the only so Abraham Lincoln was part black, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm going to say whether they should do a test Babe Ruth too, because there has yes. always been stories I, about Babe I've, Ruth. Yeah, just look at a picture of Babe. Ruth. Yeah, just look at a picture Google of Babe Ruth. Google a picture of Babe Ruth right now, and you tell me that's not a black man. It's always funny because black people can look at mixed black people yeah. and know. Oh, you're black, but you're just mixed with something. Yes. And white people can never figure it out. We always recognize our yeah. people. We can always uh, recognize you. So the last great white savior for black people was Lyndon Baines Johnson. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's 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 it. Anything else in these movies, you kiss my ass. Yeah. Except for Michelle Pfeiffer. 
in Danger's well, there, there is a, I forgot his name. Uh, somebody will tell me, I'm sure. Uh, he's a teacher down here. Clark is a white teacher down here. Oh, I, I know you weren't talking about Joe Clark. No, we're not talking about Joe Clark. Uh, in Atlanta. And uh, he had a movie. I think uh, the guy from Friends played him. Chandler. Oh, Chandler Bing? Yeah, he played him in a movie. I don't know. He dances with the kids, and I don't know. He's Was like, it as good as Sarah, uh, serving Sarah? I have never seen that. What is yes, that? you have, because it was sir. He was a uh, process server that worked for Cedric the Entertainer, and he had to serve uh, Elizabeth Hurley. I never <laughs> saw that. I do remember. The, I remember the movie, but I never saw it. I, ask our brother. That movie is hilarious. It's the best movie that any of the friend. Well, no, Jennifer Anderson has had a movie career. Yes. Her the greatest movie to come out Jennifer of any Jennifer Aniston is a hilarious. But the greatest movie to come out of any of the friends cast is We Are the Millers. Nothing yes. tops that. Hands <laughs> down. Hands down. Like I do I 100% agree. That movie is top tier. I 100% agree. That we movie the Mellers. is top tier. Yes. Uh all right, that's that's enough for today. We didn't we didn't talked about race and uh, conservative ships and ended and, on and, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> talk about the white savior. <laughs> Look, hey, don't don't you say nothing about Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Jennifer caught flack for just liking a Jamie Foxx post that was I, I, when Jewish people got upset about Jamie Foxx post. Mm -hmm. I was like, some people in the black community was like, "What they be so sister for?" And I was like, "Look, Listen. I know Jewish people." And they tell me there are certain dog whistles that I have no idea about. Yeah. And he was not doing anything to be a dog whistle. He was talking about something else that we in the black community say all the time that doesn't have anything to do with Jewish people. Yeah. But when you look at it from their perspective, it is a dog whistle. Mm -hmm. So I was like, look, all he had to do was be like, oh, my bad. I Look, that's not how I meant it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what he said. He, he, yeah. was, he was talking about Judas. He wasn't talking yeah. about... Yeah, the, the Hebrews. Although, they, yeah, Hebrews, even though the Romans yeah. killed, them. they were all Jewish. But yeah, that's what Jesus was Jewish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Jennifer Anderson had to come out because she liked it before all the hoopla, mm -hmm. and then somebody was like, "You can't be anti-Semitic," and she was like, "What? That's not oh okay. No, oh, that's how you was, took it." He was talking okay, about I fake apologize. friends. Yeah. Um, but I also have to shout out horrible bosses. But anyway. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about horrible bosses. That's also she is a horrible boss. Yes. Yeah. That's also a top tier yes, it comedy. Is. If you haven't seen the first of all, I I've been a fan of Jennifer Aniston. I never watched Friends. I watched Living Single. Uh I was on that <laughs> so I didn't need to watch Friends, but <laughs> not talking about uh taking something that is black and making it white friends. Right, right. Friends is nothing more than the white version of Living Single. And I, guess what came first? Living Single. Well, yeah, the creator said that. Yeah. That he just took Living Single and it was the same. This is the same show. The one thing, the one knock on Friends is how you gonna be in Manhattan and not show anybody of color. But I will also say mm -hmm. to defend Friends. Because I did enjoy that show. Living Single was a show in Harlem, Manhattan that didn't they have were any in, white They people. were in Brooklyn. Were they in Brooklyn? Yes. And if you remember correctly, in the first season, their upstairs neighbors were an old white couple. I do one not of, remember that. One of uh, the lady was uh, George Costanza's well, mom. Well, Ross dated uh, Aisha Taylor. Yeah. After they switched her out. Because originally, <laughs> originally it was Gabrielle Union. Yeah, well, it was two black women on there. But they were the same person. <laughs> Nobody knew. I knew. I knew too. <laughs> same damn person. All right, let's end this show. We didn't go on longer than we want to do. All right, what's what, what you want to say? It to is what it there? is. It's fine. I know, but we got to film the next show. We got to film the after hours. By the way, y'all missing out. This the after hours just be straight nonsense. It's if y'all like our dilly daddling, nonsense. if y'all like our dilly daddling, it is nothing but a bunch of dilly daddling and cussing. It is truly just pure nonsense. <laughs> nonsense. We be on there just like, what you want to talk about? I don't know. <laughs> anything. Anything. We talk about any and everything. Yeah. All right. What do you want to tell the people out there? Um. I don't know. I don't have anything. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, 
Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Happy birthday I'm just gonna to you. I'm going to keep going. Okay. Happy birthday. Oh, the whole song. No, that was it. Because okay. now my throat hurt. Okay. But on that note. <laughs> on well, that note. What was? Well, thank you everybody for the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. Yeah. Happy birthday. On that note. As always. I'll holla. Thank you for listening to Unsolicited Perspectives with Bruce Anthony. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, and donate. Donations help us keep giving you this free content each and every week. Until next time, Audi 5000. Peace.